it can't be understated. For as much as I love original concepts in games of the 8-bit era, the early days of them were heavily influenced by the arcades. Whether it's creating an unofficial take on an arcade hit, or using them as a starting point for something wild and distinctive. So regardless of what you feel about them, there's something incredibly special in having an official home version of one of your favorite arcade machines to play. But for those with a favorite that never made the official jump, it can sting a little to travel back through magazines and publications of the day and see teasers of something which never was to be. Sometimes though, there can be a happy end, thanks to the tireless works of folks involved in the archiving and preservation communities. As thanks to them, we now get to enjoy this unreleased conversion of Defenders follow-up Stargate for the Commodore 64, as brought to the world through the work of Ken Van Mersbergen and GTW64. So let's check this take out and not only just see how it plays and fares, but also whether it could have stood up proudly amongst its peers or whether the conditions that led to it being canned may have saved us all from a not so prime experience. Before we really get into the details though, a quick refresher on Stargate is me, especially because of just how it differs to its ever so iconic predecessor. Stargate hit arcades in 1981, the same year it has said predecessor, and can be seen as more of an upgrade than a true sequel, as once again, you're piloting a lone starfighter and must protect a bunch of humanoids from alien attack. The biggest upgrade here comes in the form of, surprise surprise, the Stargate, which can either whisk you to the nearest human in trouble, or another part of the planet when you fly into it. For the incredibly skilled players, flying into it whilst carrying four humans will warp you a number of stages ahead. You've also got one new feature for defensive purposes, a cloaking device which shields you from enemy attack and can be real handy when used at just the right time. But enough of the refresher and over to the Commodore 64 conversion. And I think I've got to say it because Right from the outset, it's certainly a little chunkier than you might expect in motion. As it turns out, this conversion was handled by Tom Griner, a highly respected coder of games for the VIC-20, who so happened to have had been behind the VIC-20 conversion of the original Defender. So ignoring the choppy nature of the action, does this take play well? And for the most part, I say it does. The gameplay is as frantic as you can get for an early C64 release. The window would have been 1983-1984. So, though the C64 can't throw around the types of graphics the original machine can, it still does an admirable job. What may serve as a deal breaker for some are the controls. Like with the conversion of its predecessor, Stargate chooses not to use a keyboard-based control scheme, which would be done to mimic the unique controls of the original cabinet. Instead, it uses a joystick-based scheme, and this lets you fly left or right without needing to hit, reverse to change direction, and push thrust to move. Your other abilities are all keyboard-driven. Space activates a smart bomb, pressing shift lock, thus keeping it down, engages your invisibility cloak, and return is used to make a quick hyperspace jump. At first, it might seem the most logical of schemes here, with hyperspace on the other side of the keyboard. But you're going to be using the cloak and smart bombs over them, so perhaps it's fine enough. Now, mechanically, you know, you expect the arcade experience to be brought home, and for the most part, it does. I do have to acknowledge, though, I am not an expert at Defender or Stargate. I can play a few waves in casually, and so I know the basics. And at least from my experiences here, I feel like it's meeting those up. But of course, those who are more advanced players will probably know, should they get further in, how well the translation happens. One little surprise quirk I found was one bug that was kind of annoying here. And essentially, if you complete a wave and you're on your last life, the game will end. 
Now, this was present in the recovered version, and I imagine had the game gone on to be finished for a final release, this probably would have been fixed because it kind of ruins the experience. But of course, for those who are playing it in Space Year 2024 and beyond, there is a fixed version which has been made available thanks to the folks at the CCT4 cracking and scenes that does fix this bug, so you can play the game as intended and not experience that pain. So if we ignore that bug with the game ending early, because had it gone to seek full release, I'm sure that would have been fixed. Does Stargate have the chops to make a splash? Like, had it would have made a splash in 1983? I'm not 100% sure, honestly. Part of me feels the choppy visuals here because of the character display, obviously a result of Griner's experience on the Vic, does take it a step back from even the conversion of the original Defender, which, though it's a bit rough to play, feels so much smoother when in action. I don't think it's enough to elevate it over it for me. Especially as this would have been released on cartridge. Atari Soft's other releases were all cartridge based for the Commodore 64, and so had Stargate Steam release, it likely would have been on cartridge as well. And that does mean it would have carried a higher price from your local computer shop, should you want to go hunt it down back then. But I think it also hits a harder when we look at some of the unofficial takes on Stargate, which the C64 received over the years. For the original Defender, it's always said that Alligator's Guardian has always been the best take, and I really do agree with it. Whether you're a fan of the keyboard-only control scheme or not, it really looks and plays so much closer to the original Defender than Atari Soft's own official conversion. But it's not as clear-cut here with Stargate. There isn't a straight, unofficial take that really nails Stargate for the Commodore 64. Sure, Guardian did get a sequel, and that sequel tries to take on Stargate the way Guardian took on Defender, but the truth is, it is nowhere near as good a take. It just doesn't live up to what Guardian did all the way back in 1984. So, I mean, realistically, if I'm going to recommend one alternative to get as close a Stargate experience as possible on the Commodore 64, I think it's really got to be Sensible Software's Insects in Space. Now, this isn't a 100% pure take on things. You have a, an upper and a lower surface to take care of over the solo surface in Stargate. There are also some extra complexities with its alternative to the Stargate mechanic. Now you activate it by holding the fire button for a few seconds and it spawns in front of you rather than it being located somewhere on the level. But there's also a little extra complexity in what you do when you reach it. Sure, holding it down, flying in, lets you uh, warp to a baby in trouble. Great feature. But should you collect alternating pairs of upper and lower surface babies, you get different effects when you go into the Stargate instead of simply warping. In fact, the matrix of combinations for this is really surprising. And I do recommend you try it out if you like this frantic action. Though, try and find a scan of Zap64 issue 86, because Insects in Space appeared on its cover tape, and you really want that matrix to hand to understand what you want to do if you want to try and progress in that game and master it. It's probably easier than finding a copy of the 4th Dimension compilation where the game was originally released on. With that though, I don't think there's really much more for me to say here. It's always a joy, I, I can't understand how much of a joy it is to see these games that were thought lost, that weren't even known if they were ever actually done, recovered, brought to light for us all to enjoy. Even though the C64 version of Stargate I don't think it's the most exciting conversion of that game for our beloved machine. I'm always going to appreciate what it takes to save these games and prevent them from being lost for good. And honestly, I hope you feel the same about that too. As always, if you enjoyed the video and want to show it some love, the easiest way to do that is the usual video things. Give it a like, give the game a shot and leave some comments down below, and consider subscribing if you've not done so already. It might be trite, but all of this really does help keep the show viable. It also helps know that there are people out there who share the curiosity that I do in looking at these facets of gaming's past, and that there's more to them than just the nostalgia of what you experienced in your own youth. 
nothing more for me to say though than to thank you all very much for watching.